Welcome back everyone to Beautiful Versa for today's game against Kayser Sport. Yes, I did say in the previous episode we would come back for Denisla Sport, but I decided we have quite a few cup games coming up, both in the Turkish Cup and of course in Europe. So we're breaking it up, we're having a league game in today's episode. We've just come past the transfer window deadline. Did we bring anyone in? Did anyone depart? Let's head on into Football Manager 21 and find out. Okay everyone, so in today's catch-up we've only got one game and well, as you can see, Miranda of all people got the opening goal after the goalkeeper pushed it out to him from the free kick. They then went and got an equaliser, lovely delivery into the box for It's Friday, It's Friday, gotta get down on Friday to nod it past the goalkeeper. Blackett though then went and played one down the wing to Youssef. Youssef with a lovely cross and yes, Anal penetrated their defence and put it in the net. We then went and got a third one. That came from Anal making a lovely run down the right hand side, playing it across to Sinan who just passed it through for Carranza to slot in the bottom right hand side. So, rather simple game in the end. We did have that worrying moment when it's Friday, Friday, got get down on Friday, got an equaliser, but we managed to take back control of the game and it was a nice comfortable victory in the end. So, we had 15 shots to their 6, 9 on target to their 4, 2 XG to 0.55, 5 corners to 3, 6 fouls to 17, I think their discipline was one of their major issues, 0 yellow cards piece, 92% passing to their 79, 65% possession to 35. As you can see, they did get an injury on the 35th minute to Berba Miranda getting that goal Friday, managing to equalise it just before half time, but our anal adventure and Carranza went and got us the victory. Now, as you can see, a few players did struggle. So, Tiago, again, rather disappointing, got a 6.6. .6. Lassen, very disappointing on his 6.5. But, Umit, of all people, we brought the youngster on. As you can see, we already had the youngster in Miranda already playing. And, well, he also performed admirably as well. He got a 6.8. Not quite on the same level as Miranda with a 7.7 .7 and a goal at centre-back. But, quite... A decent performance from the right back considering he's mainly a left back and who's just filling in that role as for the rest of the team well zub zub got 6.9 in goal kubele got a 7 7.1 for blackett 7.4 and 7.6 for Mehmet and emriham respectively gherkan had a decent performance got a 7 on the right hand side erin he was okay got a 6.8 on the left hand side and Carranza with a goal and a 7.7 .7 rating match miranda's amazing performance Although, I'll probably give it to Miranda a little bit more, considering he scored a goal and he's a centre-back. You don't expect that every single day. As for the people who came on, well, we've already gone over Umit. The other players who came on, Anal came on, got 7.5 and a goal. If he started, he possibly could have been one of those players who got 7.7. .7. Very good performance out of him. I believe I brought him on for Gerkan, just so Gerkan could have a nice rest. Same with Youssef coming on for Eren. Eren wasn't particularly having a bad game, but it's nice to rest up your winger, especially when we've got such a condensed fixture list. We then have Sinan Kert, 7.2. He was on just because Thiago was having a bad game, quite frankly. Thiago had a bad game, we brought on Kert, and he performed, getting a 7.2 and helping us with our victory. So, with that out the way, it is, of course, time to go head on over, talk to Mr. Jason Dodds. But, of course, before I do that, I'm going to have a little look at how our budget looks. Okay, so before we get into the tactical meeting screen, I thought today's episode, this be a good time to have a little look at our financial situation. So, as you can see, our overall balance is now £19,596,839. Quite frankly, our money has just shot through the roof. That's mainly due to Europe and just generally playing better. You know, we get paid based on our wins, a little bit less for draws and of course losses. I don't think we get anything for a loss. So, yep, we've been performing better and as such, that's not looking good though. Income this month has only been three grand, 323,699 is our expenditure. 
don't know why my brain couldn't process that one, but it couldn't. So that has left us with a profit loss for this month of 320532 This season, though, we are 9.6 million in the profit. Yes, lovely profit margin. Last season, we made 3.9. So more than double. That's nice. More than double. And like I said, that has meant our budget has drastically shot through the roof and we've somehow got £526 in our transfer budget. As you might have noticed, our wage budget has been moved up. I believe there's a £39,000 wage budget left over. Feel free to do the maths if you're interested, but I believe it's about £39,000. I moved everything into wage budget. We did have about £2 million, I believe it was one8 Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was about 1.8. Moved it into the wage budget. That was absolute zero. Don't know where the £526 has come from. Guess the chairman just felt like a zero transfer budget didn't look good. So here's £526, very odd amount. And yeah, that's now our transfer budget. Our original budget, of course, was 1.36 million. Our budget minimum for next year is 2.87, which is nice to see. Unfortunately, though, this lovely 19.5 million sitting in the bank isn't all good so right now we've got 75 percent of transfer revenue held get over 25.7 which we'll probably do by the start of next season if not the middle point of next season drops it down to 40 percent so yeah we either need a new board or we need to just keep it just below that figure so yeah we don't want that happening that's not a good thing have that or we just need to go on a selling spree prior to that which i'm hoping to do unfortunately so, though the four players i believe it is that i want to sell if i can sell them we're probably going to go over that threshold but speaking of which how did we get on in the transfer market well if we head on over to the squad screen we didn't bring anyone in there's no new faces other than the two youngsters of course I haven't got anyone set for the start of next year. That's because Yuziki, who I was focusing on mainly, he won't talk to anyone. He's just waiting for his contract to completely run out. And then he just wants a big, massive pile of offers and take basically who's probably going to pay him the most, which I don't blame him for. He's coming from PSG, I believe. Or was it Lille? He's coming from France. He's coming from one of the French clubs. I think it was Lille. Now I think about it. He is getting released by Lille. He is actually transfer listed. So if we went out and paid for him, which I don't fancy doing for a guy whose contract's running out, we could have got him that way. Although paying his transfer would have cost us too much to then cover his wage because he is on about 20 grand a week, I believe. In fact, let's have a little look. We'll head on over to Lille. No, not Lille. Lille. Thank you. Losk. So Losk, Lille. If we quickly head to their senior squad, where is he? Transfer list. Oh, he's transferred. Transfer listed, as you can see. He's on our short list. Transfer listed for 1.7 million now. It's gone down, probably because they wasn't able to sell him. As you can see, very versatile player, but he is on 21,000 a week. Don't think he's going to take much of a wage cut. We'll probably have to pay about 25 grand a week. And like I said, we've got 39 with no transfer budget. So even that 12 grand a week, I don't think that makes 1.7 million. You can do the maths, but I don't think it does. So yeah, we couldn't have really gone and bought him. That wasn't really an option. We need his contract to run out. Hopefully his contract runs out. Then we can snap him up, bring him into the squad and be another part of our Turkish core. Speaking of our Turkish core, we've had to try and hold it together a little bit. You might have remembered when we brought in anal yes our anal adventure well everybody loves our anal because they tried purchasing him bit cheeky they offered about three million and as you can see that's not much more than he's worth he's got a bit of growth in him he's our backup he's going to be our backup for a long time he's 23 years of age he's a solid turkish player and quite frankly they can leave him alone because he's sticking around as is Atkas. Atkas is getting a little actas don't know why i got Atkas. But Actas, he's going to be sticking around for a little while, 29 years of age. He's probably going to end his career here. 
three and a uh, three and a half three star three star potential not the best of center backs but he makes up our turkish core same with adigan adigan again can get better players three star three star potential but he fills that turkish role it allows us to bring in some good youngsters like Miranda at 18 years of age. American, he's going to develop, be a world-class central defender. And the same with Thiago in central attacking mid, although he has not shown his promise at the moment. 6.8, very lacking. In fact, we might take him out of the squad for today's game. But he's four-star. He has potential to grow, as you can see. Valued at 1.1 million. Similar sort of player. In Demir, after a couple of seasons, he should be worth around that 10 million mark. Eight, probably as a minimum. So he's going to shoot up in value. And yes, in terms of players, I've been trying to get rid of though. As you can see, Godinho has dropped down to the bench. I want to hold on to him probably for the next season. He's three star, three star potential, valued at seven. He's a decent backup. Might sell him if an offer comes in, but not too interested in just pushing him out the door mailman though we do have a young backup in umit as you saw from the highlight of the previous game umit had a very good job at right back he is of course a left back though he's our fair choice sitting behind mailman and quite frankly i want him to move up now to that bench slot take the mailman out and do it this way so speaking of we do need to bring yildrum back into the squad so we're going to bring yildrum up and that is what I'm looking at doing with our bench. In terms of other players though, as you can see, Obilor and Milinkovic are both unregistered. Milinkovic I do think is still okay for the Euro Cup, but both of them for the league are unregistered. And Shirok. Shirok's a good player, very good player in fact, as you can see, 7.1 rating, 3 star, 3 star potential. 31 years of age though, he's on that decline. Good player, just we can do better. If we're going to have foreign players in the team, I now want them to be four star, five star, really good, strong players for the future, or at least young players who can develop for the future, you know, like your Tiagos. As you can see, Demir, he's going to go up to a four star. Gullier, he's lacking behind, but he's going to catch up, he's getting better. And Carranza, three and a half star. Three and a half star is probably that limit of players I want to get in. I want them to be young, I want them to be feisty, new foreign players coming into the team and just spicing things up a bit you know speaking of which Zubzok Zubzok three star three star potential probably the next player to go in this team I think it's either him or Blackett Blackett 7.2 maybe he's next to go he is 29 compared to 28 but I think both of those are probably where we need to pack up the team going forward but that's problem for another day. First of all, we need to get rid of these three and Shirok. And of course, I can't wait for Halit to work his way up into the team as well. Probably get rid of Mad, thinking of which. Anil can drop into that sub slot. We can bring in Halit, who's a very good right-hand side in midfielder. He can come in there as the backup. Anil can become the backup striker, which he once was. And yeah, we would have a promising right-hand sided winger. And we can keep developing. I think that is the best bet for the future. But for now, in fact, you know what? Since that's the plan for the future, we're going to start working on it now. Start working on it now. Get the players out that we don't need. So there's our five players who can depart. That frees up a lot of foreign player slots. In fact, it's freed up three foreign player. Oh, five foreign player slots. All five of them. We've got a German, a Serbian, a Nigerian, a Danish, and an Iraqi player. So that's going to give us five of our foreign play slots. It's going to be absolutely amazing because we're only going to have a few scattered throughout the team who are foreign players. In fact, when we get rid of Gordinho, we'll have a full Turkish bench, hopefully, is the plan, if I can find a good enough Turkish centre-back to replace him with. But I'm rambling. We've had a look at the budget. We've worked out we've got no new transfers. It is, of course, time to talk to Mr. Jason Dodds over in the tactical meeting screen. So I'll see you fine folks over there in just a second. OK, everyone. So we are here in Jason Dodds's territory. And well, we have a very good pitch condition for today's game. 23,612 tickets sold for our capacity of 42,985. A little disappointing 
considering how low the attendance is, but not very surprising considering we're versing 16th in the league. In terms of the weather, well, it's a gusty minus 6 degrees Celsius. A little bit chilly out there here today, but hopefully we can manage to play a decent game of football. As you can see, they're expected to play a 4-4-2, but half the time that's never the case. It just makes it up as it goes along, I think. I think they just think everyone defaults to a 4-4-2, and then when they don't, they don't. So we'll find out when we get into the game, but that's what is expected. As you can see, we've got a few different opposition instructions, so we're going to like them, and we shall head on inside. As you can see, I've changed out Thiago for Sinan from the previous screen, because, like I was saying, he hasn't quite performed. Sinan has been performing coming off the bench, so we're going to give Sinan the opportunity to start. Hopefully he can repay that, possibly with a goal, if not an assist. The rest of the team, though, is pretty easy to guess. As you can see, we've also got a mentality of positive. So, goalkeeper is Zubzuk, a back line of Blackett, Kublé, the youngster Miranda coming in, and Lassen. We then have central midfield of Mehmet and Emrehan. Our attacking midfield is quite easy to name now. Erin on the left-hand side, Gerkan on the right. This time, though, we have Sinan in between instead of Thiago, and Kuranza up front. Our bench consists of Atbek, Moosing, Gadinho, Amit, Umit, although I was tempted to give him a possible start, he's managed to just retain a place on the bench. Another youngster in Volkan, Halit makes his way onto the bench, Youssef, Tiago and Anal. Of course we've dropped Mad, swapping Anal down there. I should start putting his training onto striker training instead of being winger training. So you know what, we'll do that since this is our plan going forward. So we should go for positional instead of doing strike. Oh, he's already on strike training. Well, that's interesting. I've been training him as a striker and using him as a winger. No wonder he's been scoring goals. So if you've got a player who's a striker who can play winger and you're using him as a winger, just train him as a striker is probably the way that seems to suggest because he'll just that inside and score goals like a striker anyways. Anyways, that is enough rambling from me. It's time to head on over, submit the team's sheet. And the real question is, get your bets in, ladies and gents. Has Carranza got any complaints? Will it be one? Will it be two? Or will it be more? Or none? He might have become an optimist. Doubt it, but he might have been. It's one. He's got one complaint. And that's the passing into space one. We also have this notable change of kit for Tiago. And, well, these are our opposition instructions that have gone down quite well. As you can see, they've got the Tasmanian Devil, Bakayoko. This guy, he is a pain in the backside. I don't know why. He's always been a pain in the backside when we've played them. But hopefully, he's not a pain today. Because I'd really hate him to be a pain today. But behind him, he's got the Tasmanian Devil, so... He might do pretty well, and their goalkeeper shouldn't struggle for fitness, because quite frankly, he's alone. He's literally alone. But enough rambling. Get up there and carry on. You know what? Carry on from where you finished last match. We had some players who had fantastic form, Carranza being one of them. Hasn't motivated him, though. It's motivated Demir and Kurt. As for the rest of the team, they're composed. A couple of people on the bench are motivated. Thiago. Shame you're motivated now, I've dropped you to the bench. If you have that sort of mentality when you're starting, you might not have got dropped to the bench. But it's time to talk to Ennis Kilik of Sporks. You enjoy your rather quiet transfer deadline, which saw no players coming into the club. Was that your intention? No, not particularly. We would have liked to bring someone in. We couldn't get the players out that we want to get out, so there's no point in bringing players in. Plus, we didn't necessarily need to bring players in for this window it's just bringing players in for the future but enough rambling we were browsing the market but nothing took our fancy in the end having the best defense in the super league must have you looking forward to another win well it has me looking forward to winning some points not necessarily a win because a win we need to score that just necessarily means we're going to get a draw we don't want a draw because quite frankly galatasaray are probably going to win their game so I'm proud of that record, and the work that's gone into it will continue to work hard to keep getting better. Exactly. That's our approach to life, quite frankly. 
4 2 3 1 for today's game. Our recent form looking great, got a draw and four wins. As for them, they've got four losses and a win. And they're not going for the expected formation, they're going for a 4 2 3 1. That's quite frankly the default formation. Everyone comes and plays against our 4 2 3 1, notices how amazing we are with it, and then they steal it. So. Time to crack on with today's game. Hopefully the lads can perform as expected and we can pick up a victory. We are of course versing 16th in the league, although they have moved up to 15th as the score currently is. So yeah, hopefully we can get something going. 20 minutes in though, we do not have a highlight, which is a little worrying. We need to get something going lads, come on. You've managed to get a yellow card out of them, but we need to get some highlights, please. Guys, guys, bet six minutes. You've had six shots and only one is on target. What are you playing at? Demand more. This is ridiculous. As you can see, Gullier and Carranza not having the greatest of games. Everyone else playing okay, game. But those two particularly, although there's now a third player who drops into that category. I think it's time to make at least a double substitute. We need to pick things up. The lads are not performing as they should. We've had six shots to their absolute zero. One on target, two. You guessed it, their absolute zero. 0 0.57 XG, though, that is pathetic. Two, their non existent XG. They've had no shots, they've got no XG. Six corners to their one, seven fouls to their 15, zero real cast to two. 88% passing, made to get that up to 90, to their 83, and 55% possession to 45. Again, we want to get that to about 60, 70, if not higher. So. Dressing room. I'm not happy with performance out there. Get playing better. Gullier, you're nervous. Having a bad game. Taking you off. Going to give Carranza time to bounce back because he's motivated from the team talk. And Kert again. 6.6. .6, having a bad game. Probably going to take him off. You're nervous. 6.8. We'll let you be nervous. You can be a nervous wreck. Mehmet. In fact, I could shift Mehmet up. Not going to though. Tiago. Come on. Show us why you are such a good player. We believe in you, Tiago. Come on. Repay that faith. Same with you, Yusef. You're a great youngster. Both of you are amazing youngsters. Come on and show exactly why we think you're amazing youngsters. So, go out there. Go and be the difference. Go be the difference. Go get us a highlight. At least a highlight. We want a highlight. Thank you. Black it with the throwing. Throws it in for Mehmet. Now play back to Kublai on the halfway line. It's now with Emrehan. Back to Kublai once more. Goes and passes it back to Emrehan. Over to Gerkan. Overlapping Lassen. They've found the overlapping Lassen. He's got acres of space. Whips it in. Carranza. Free header at the near post and nods it past the goalkeeper. Lovely header from Carranza. Gets us an opening goal. And the lung just can't get over to it. Ah, finally. Tiago, beautiful ball by the way. He's not going to get an assist, he's not going to get any real recognition, but that was a beautiful pass to find Lassen over in that space for him to drill in that cross. And I appreciate it, Tiago. In fact, the game has kind of rewarded him. In previous games, he would have got practically nothing for doing that, but it seems like this game, the build-up, actually has some sort of recognition. Gerkan, he's looking a little tired on 6.7, probably should take him off. So we're going to wait to our usual 62nd-ish minute. We're going to give him a few more minutes to play out. There we go, 63rd minute. Seems like a good time to make some substitutions to me. These are the three players who are most tired. So we have Carranza, Demir and Aidigan. Carranza did get a goal. I kind of want to substitute him though. Rest him for future games. Anal, good little player. Can bring him on. Blackett is on a 6.6 .6, though. Hmm. In fact, how are we doing for ratings? Worst player is Blackett right now, followed by Kublai. Kublai is on 6.7 though. We do need to get Blackett off, I think. So we're going to bring on the youngster. We're trusting in the youth. As you can see, we've got the youngster in Youssef coming on. We've got the youngster in Umit who has come on. The youngster of Thiago who has come on. We're starting with an amazing youngster at centre-back. And yeah, Anal is only 23. So bringing him on is also trusting in our youth. And I think that's not a bad approach. In fact, we're going for youth. Volkan, come on for Emrehan. Emrehan's a little bit tired. Gonna rest him up. Not been a bad game, but again, we want to rest him for future games. 
hopefully we don't have a disaster considering we've just used up all our substitutes but we should be okay we should fm gods sports interactive please do not bite me on the backside now we should be okay and they've actually got some shots which means they've finally got an xg an amazing xg of 0.1 but an xg nevertheless for k series 4 Volkan though will throw it in. Mehmet plays it back to Volkan. The names are quite in the way here. Umit has his cross blocked. Mehmet will collect it though. He can play it over to Miranda. Instead he's going to go all the way back to Zubzak who is probably going to play it short to Kubele. Kubele now to Volkan in the centre circle. Nice ball over to Yusef. Keeps it in. He has Umit making a run. But it's a foul by Gunders. Gunders has gone and got them down to 10 men. Speaking of which, we do need to worry about Umit. We don't want Umit going to get sent off as well. Currently sitting on a yellow card. He's only got five minutes to hold out though. And we are hopefully going to pick up a victory. We have. Now, not the most convincing. In fact, considering where they are in the league, rather disappointing to only get a 1-0 victory at home against 16th in the league. But... This has been a team we've played a lot. It feels like we've played them like 50 times already during this series. But they always give us a good game. And we picked up the victory. So we can't complain too much. Although it could have gone a little bit easier considering the circumstances. But as you can see, the match statistics are... We've had 11 shots. They managed to pick up 6 in the whole of that second half. 4 on target to their 3. 0.96 XG we picked up a little bit. But we still didn't break that 1 threshold. To their 0.48. 11 corners to 4. 14 fouls to their terrible discipline. Which probably was what gave us the game in the end. 24 fouls. 1 yellow card to 5 yellow cards. 88% possession to 84. Possession. Passing. Completion even. 55% possession to 45. I don't believe that changed since the first half. As you can see, we had a very mixed bag. Good performances from Zubzuk, Kuble, Miranda, Lassen, Mehmet, all getting 7.37, 7.2, 7.3 and 7.4 respectively. Umit did okay with a 6.7 coming off the bench, but he did pick up a yellow card. Volkan, disappointingly, only got a 6.5. 6.9 for Yusef was a good performance. 6.7 for Tiago could do a little better. Not too bad though. 6.8 for Gek on, on the right. Anal didn't do very good. Came on, got 6.5. In terms of players substituted off, well, Blackett was doing okay with a 6.7. Not too bad, not too good. Emraham, 6.8. Solid performance. Just got a bit tired towards the end. Aaron Gullier, he was having a bad game. 6.5. Same with Kurt with a 6.6. Probably means Thiago is going to worm his way back into the team. Kurt, you had your one opportunity and you messed it up. And well, Carranza got a goal, 7.1. Great game. Unfortunately, was getting a little bit tired. So we gave Anal a bit of match time. So let's head to the dressing room, talk to the lads. Give them a pat on the back, even though some of them don't particularly deserve it. And that has gone down pretty well. So it's time to talk to the media. Engine Task Delane of the Turkish Football Review. You have just managed to extend your unbeaten run, and the team looks almost invincible in the league right now. Do you think you can keep this form going? Mm, after the way that game went, probably not for too much longer, to be honest. We're taking things one match at a time, but confidence is high, and we're bullish about our chances going into every fixture. Is there a chance that overconfidence and complacent? No. Each result brings just a bit more confidence for the next game, and that's a good thing. Exactly. That's a good thing. Confidence is always good. It's positive. As you can see, we have the same amount of points as Galatasaray. They do dominate us on goal difference, probably beat us on head-to-head -head as well, so we're going to count it as we're a point behind them, quite frankly. And they do have a game in hand, which, of course, is the late kickoff here today are we going to get to see the result of that i don't know we are on a five game unbeaten run though to be fair the teams we beat we should probably be beating and that one we should have probably won so yeah the way we've performed we should not i'll give you that we shouldn't have based on our performance but based on the team yeah we should be winning that one 
Anyways, we are going to come back for Denizli Spore. Not the home fixture, but in fact the second fixture. I'm going to play the first one, play Silver Spore, and then we shall come back for that before we head over to Paris for our following episode. Because I think that Turkish Cup, if we get through, will be after the Euro Cup. I think that's the way the format in is. Hence why I was saying we're going to have a few cup games because we're going to have that one. We're going to have the Paris one. We're probably going to have the second Paris leg because we want to see how that turns out. So that's three cup games in a row. If we make it through in the Turkish Cup, that's probably going to be four. And I think where the European Cup falls, it might be even five in a row. So yeah, that's mainly why I wanted to do today's episode in the league game so we can at least get some league action before we go on hopefully a big cup run in terms of episodes but i thank you all for watching i hope you have a lovely night and goodbye